What's going on? This man speaks nonsense. This man speaks nonsense indeed. Hello, VOD people. We are here with the third, is it annual? I don't know if the other two were in like their own years, but the third annual regular Pad Hunger Games. Also, uh, JL, JL Rizzy, thank you for the follow. Um, this, as I said at the top of the look at part of the stream, this was an incentive as part of the Finny fundraiser back in July uh, to return to the Cornucopia, I guess. What's the, I mean, the Cornucopia is like the center, but what's like the name of the entire arena is there like a name for that or is it just like the place where the hunger games happens doesn't really roll off the tongue the reaping i guess that's like the beginning though i don't know whatever um we have our cast so the first hunger games is kind of just like kh mainstays you know you had like i think all of the major trios were represented um you know the major villains we had some oddballs in there like yen Sid and the fairy godmother um, I believe they were in District 12, actually. Um, but then in the second Hunger Games, it was all characters that I had, you know, either occasionally or pretty consistently had voices for. Um, so, you know, your Claytons, your Xemnases, your Soras, um, some other ones like uh, Ringo Starr, David Russell, um, who actually won um, the last Hunger Games. So who was the I think it was, was it Donald or Tara won the first Hunger Games? I know David Russell won the second. And so, for the third Hunger Games, we have a completely new newbie cast, completely fresh. Um, by the way, I this is a controversial topic for the Ultimas, but I asked for OSTs to play in the background, and a lot of them were just giving me silly, goofy gags. So I just <laughs> I settled on FF10 because, you know, you can't really go wrong with that. Um, let me know if that's too loud or unhearable. I, I can't really tell. Let me actually check on my own. Okay. A little bit quieter, probably. This is the icky version. Yeah. Testing, testing. Okay. That sounds better to me? Maybe a little bit quiet? Now it's too soft? I think it's fine. <laughs> Sorry if you're hearing me twice there. Um, I should do that more often, though. I should just check the... The levels through the stream itself. Turn it up a little bit, a little tiny, teeny bit. Okay, so let's go over our cast here. And this was kind of built by both me and the chat, um, I want to say two streams ago. Yeah, we were playing KH2, I think. Um, so we have, or was it, was it Skate Adventure? I don't know. It was one of the two. Um, so, uh, in District 1, we have, I, I try to like pair them up, you know, as to the best of my ability for, you know, cohesion. But we have Platinum Presto and specifically Sporge Abib, uh in District 1. Um, you know, both kind of channel mascots. Um, specifically Sporge Abib, just because I think he's, you know, more frightening. Um, something that you'd be more afraid to have facing you down in the Hunger Games. I wanted to find, like, a kind of scarier Presto alternative, but I wasn't, like, no one's really done creepy Presto fan art, so. Um, we have, in District 2, our very own Gabaka and PJ. Two VODs, uh, sorry, two mods here. <laughs> two mods, and you know, they mod the VODs. Um, and they are also the final two of Survival, spoiler, Survivor Royal Reckoning. Um, really? It just cuts off like that? Okay, cool. Well, this is not fun music at all. Let's skip ahead to Titus's theme. <laughs> um, yeah, got vodka. That's what I was thinking. She's a, she's a VOD. Um, so yeah, these two uh, mortal enemies from birth, um, but they did work together in Survivor. Um, so good stuff there. In District 3, I really don't have any other way to describe this district besides the, the fruity one. We have Kiwi and Mango, two, uh, again, real people, uh, but represented through, you know, produce. Um, Kiwi, of course, you know, my actual IRL friend from college. And Dat Mango Sentinel, uh, our very own in the chat, who, uh, you know, has trolled me on many occasions with these nuts jokes. I'm sure he can use those skills to, to aid him. Um, in, in the games here. Um, also sang a parody of Never Had a Friend Like Me for my birthday. So a lot of, a man of many talents, I would say here with Mango. Titus's theme is so quiet. Um, in District 4, we have the Dessa District in Kid Patty and Ryan. Pretty self-explanatory there, two icons of Hollywood. <clears throat> District 5 is again, a bit of another uh, Survivor reference. Um, the, t the tribe names in Survivor Royal Reckoning that I ran with the patrons and Requiems were uh, Gantu and Tali Tali. So here we have Gantu, who many in the stream have, you know, expressed their desire to hook up with. Uh, the Gantu fuckers, they're called. And then this is not actually Tali. I know it kind of looks like it could be. 
Um, Tolly the Horse Girl is, of course, we're getting into the meme territory now. Um, Tolly the Horse Girl was the girl who uh, bullied me in middle school and, and grade school and um, yelled at me for playing Animal Crossing Wild World at my own 10th birthday party. She was, uh, you know, an avowed and notorious horse girl, um, you know, a vodka icon, you know, a champion of women's rights. Um, so she had to be in here um, just for representation's sake, even. District 6, we have what I call the Theater Kid Division. This is uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda and Allison Stoner, but specifically their character from uh, Camp Rock. She's really good. I don't know her actual name. They say it in the scene, which I had to watch to get this screen grab, but I don't know the name of the character. So Allison Stoner, um, he does the... And, you know, does the, the awesome keyboard solo. I got to watch it, sorry, you know, excuse me. Um, in District 7, I have two villains from the Life is Strange series. We have Nathan Prescott from LIS 1 and Daniel from LIS 2. Um, Daniel, I would say, out of everyone in this, um, you know, Hunger Games cast, is probably the most dangerous character, but also the one I want to win the least. Um, because he has the power of telekinesis, like, all Nathan has is a gun that he's not even really using on purpose at any point. I think he just accidentally uses it. Um, so Daniel definitely someone to look out for, um, and to cheer for when he dies by falling out of a tree. Uh, and hopefully falling onto one of either Tails or Cubby in District 8. I kind of paired them up because, you know, Cubby is dressed as the bear and Slightly is the fox one. And so Tails is a fox, Miles Prower, Tails the fox. Um, really only here because of Tails Scream being a real mainstay on the channel um, since Sonic Heroes. Uh, Cubby is a bit of an older regular Pat meme. He's another one of those alt-right, you know, weirdo Kingdom Hearts characters. Um, you know, distinct voice. It's really only Cubby and Gantu who uh, are repping Kingdom Hearts here. Um, I already saw that picture, Baka, and uh, there's basically the only reason is that uh, this fits better and it needed to be the lip bite. It needed to be the LMM lip bite. Um, so I apologize. Uh, in District 9, we have two really putrid characters. We have Gurgi from the Black Cauldron, another, like, I would say 2021 regular Pat meme, and The Shitter, one of the newer memes from the stream. Uh, the Shitter, who appears in the hit film from, like, 2004 or 5, uh, All I Smell is Poo. Um, you know, much to people's chagrin, this character has been cast, but I think, you know, Gurgi and The Shitter, both really feekly inclined characters, so it makes sense to me that they're both here. District 10, this is really like the Ultima representation here. Uh, Coggers, so the, the backstory on Coggers is that Fruitoon saw a, like, uh, Fruitoon, if Fruitoon's here, where were you? Like, was this like Legoland? Or it's like a Lego exhibit of Beauty and the Beast. It's Belle and the Beast, and then you have like the furniture characters off in the background. And um, Fruitoon sent us a picture in Ultima Club of like, you know, focusing on Bell and the Beast, but we spotted Coggers in the background, just, you know, cogging out of his mind. So, Coggers is an emo in the Discord server, and the Ultimas really love Coggers. Um, so he's a bit of a mascot for, for Ultima. And then you also have Neb, who is the... This is an enamel pin of uh, Neb, um, from Life is Strange Double Exposure. Um, I guess a lot of people don't like Neb. I love Neb. I think he's, like, one of the best parts of that putrid game. Um, so he's another mascot. So, like, you know, these kind of ballish, like, rotund mascot guys are both in District 10. Um, kind of some misfits here. Like, these are just two leftover Life is Strange characters, and Alyssa Anderson is her last name. And, uh, you know, like my net voice, yeah. And, uh, Warren Graham. Um, I was gonna type Warren Gayram because that's what the bathroom stall has his name as, but I thought people might not really get what that is, but that is, uh, that's how we refer to him pretty often in Life is Strange. Um, you know, I would say hero versus villain energy here from Life is Strange 1. Alyssa, one of the most powerful forces, uh, and Warren, definitely one of the, you know, deadliest and most nice guyish, very, uh, milady coded Warren is. And then, of course, in District 12, uh, two people who have either had relationships with or one party, you know, was, uh, desiring a relationship with. Uh, Elliot the Deer from Open Season, whom I was dating in a dream, um, and, you know, notoriously in the dream, I drew a bath for him and made him craft mac and cheese, and he was such a bastard to me. Um, I had not seen Open Season for probably 10 to 15 years prior to having that dream, um, but he still came into my subconscious somehow, 
and uh, it was really just emotionally abusive to me. And then of course, Mr. Plow, which I did not know when we started naming. Also, hi, Greeny, and thank you for the 45 months. Um, I didn't know that Mr. Plow was like a Simpsons reference, but this is a reference to the chatter who came into my stream, first time chatter, while I was in Rail Canyon of uh, Sonic Heroes, fittingly, and they said, I would plow you so hard. And so they've kind of gone down in history. I don't really like to like memorialize and, uh, you know, like build up these characters in like the stream war and infamy, but um, sometimes they slip through the cracks. So this is Mr. Plow. Uh, memorialized forever in the Hunger Games 3 cast, okay? So, that does it for the cast. I'm not gonna edit relationships or anything. I don't even know if you can in Hunger Games, to be honest. Um, I'm not gonna bother with it. We're just gonna jump right on into it. Um, I guess everyone, you know, shotgun picks on who you want to win. Let's just see. Um, I would run a prediction. Actually, we can once we get to the final 10, right? Um, predictions are up. What was the prediction? Oh, District 6 or 7. Okay. Okay, gotcha. I think last time we did it, we waited till Final 10, and then we, uh... People bet on the individual characters, but... Now people can, like, cast a wider net. You get two picks, basically. No, it's fine. Listen, it's fine. Looks slut. It's okay. Alright? So if anyone has... I feel like, you know, Coggers is a very popular pick. Um, me personally, I would love to see a win from any of Coggers, The Shitter, um, Kid Patty or Ryan. I think that'd be a good story. Um, Lin-Manuel Miranda, Kiwi or PJ, you know, I'll be happy with almost anything here. Um, so, let's, uh, let's get right into it with the, the reaping. Uh, we're gonna be at the cornucopia here, so we might get, we might get no dead here, we might get a ton. Let's see what happens. Okay, let me zoom in a bit. There you go. Alright, Spore, uh, Sporjabi runs away from the cornucopia, I forgot that's his full name. Mr. Plow runs away, uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda <laughs> rips a mace out of Cogger's hands. Um, he's not gonna throw away his shot, folks. Daniel runs away from the cornucopia. Drat. Uh, Presto snatches a bottle of alcohol in a rag. Okay, like father, like son, snatching the bottle of alcohol. We have Elliot clutches a first aid kit and runs away. God damn it, son of a bitch. I guess I am rooting against Elliot, I will say. Elliot, Daniel, I'm not really thrilled for a Mr. Plow win. Um, we have three people here. What's this? Gurgi, Gantu, and PJ work together to get as many supplies as possible. Yeah, I feel like those three make a lot of sense as a, as a friend group. Um, I could see them being a powerful alliance moving forward. Um, I could definitely see that. <laughs> Alright, we have Tails here. Tails takes a handful of throwing knives, watch out. Okay, we have Neb. Runs away, alright, all you Neb haters. Not, uh, not getting what you want yet. We have Cubby, runs away. Gotta get out of here! We have Nathan. Nathan and Kiwi fight- No! <laughs> no! Nathan strangles Kiwi with the strap of a bag. Oh, not my buddy Kiwi. Not fella, fella, fella. I can't believe this. Um, he finally came back to us live on stream and they're playing the, the Final Fantasy X death music for Kiwi over the speakers in the arena. This is so sad. Everyone, salute, salute to Kiwi. Yeah, throw up your emotes. Why do the good die young? I'm gonna let this close out. Fake concerned voice. Oh no, not Kiwi! Oh. <laughs> PJ pinned it. <laughs> Rest well, King. Oh, he's gonna be thrilled to hear that he was not subject to anything else in this. Yeah, so Mango is now alone in the Fruity District. We have Kid Patty. Okay, running away. Skating away, probably more accurately. Um, we have Vodka. Vodka rips a mace out of Ryan's hands. Vodka, that's a child. He's nine years old. Unless this is current Ryan, who is like a 28-year-old, maybe 29-year-old now, DJ in California. I don't care. I don't care, it's mine. All right, we have Allison Stoner. Is she really good? Runs away, okay, good job. The Shitter, the Shitter scares Alyssa away from the cornucopia. I wonder how he did that. Does anyone have any theories as to how the shitter from the hit video, All I Smell Is Poo, managed to scare away a woman in his presence? I have a couple of guesses. Um, we have Warren, gathers as much food as he can. Going completely ape, Warren is. Alright, Mango. What's happening with Mango? Mango runs away, okay. We have Tolly the Horse Girl, clutches a first aid kit and runs away. Whatever. Like, I'm not rooting for Tolly either. Alright. We have day one. 
Coggers diverts Gantu's attention and runs away. Yeah, I feel like Gantu's always chasing after, like, small little creatures. That's kind of like, I would say his forte, but he's always kind of being, you know, thwarted by Stitch and Lilo and others of that ilk. So, Coggers, you know, getting a win in early here. Really love to see that for the Ultimas. Um, Tali and Warren, that is a fucking alliance made of my worst nightmares. Jesus Christ. Um, they're splitting up to search for resources. Yeah, it is. I have to, um... You know, I wonder if I can move that up a bit? Maybe? We'll see. Um, we have this group here. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Gurgi and Alyssa fight Tails and Presto. Tails and Presto survive. Okay. Really thrilled to get Gurgi out of the way. Gurgi is our second to fall here. I'm a little sad to lose Alyssa. Really glad that Presto has a kill on the board. That's very exciting. Um... Sad that we don't get to see more from Melissa. I mean, she doesn't really have any strengths or skills. Sorry, we'll turn the music down again. Yeah, I am yelling anyway. Um, yeah, Max, <laughs> that's a good point. You know, Alyssa, it's kind of a miracle she made it out of the cornucopia at all because Max is always there. Save her from footballs, uh, pool noodles, um, a puddle on the road. And I guess there was like the one time where she saved her from actual death, but Max is not here because... Uh, I don't really fuck with Max anymore after double exposure. I mean, the whole experience is tainted for me, so she wasn't cast. All right, we have Allison Stoner. Oh, yes, Alice, she's really good. She's really good. Allison Stoner poisons Daniel's drink. He drinks it and dies. Oh, this is huge. This, I, Yes, I'm cheering on the death of a nine-year-old, a fictional nine-year-old, for the record. She is really good. She's really good. Oh my god, this is a huge day. Goaded Allison Stoner. <laughs> so that means of the Life of Strange characters, we have Warren, Nathan, and technically Neb are still left. Um, so Alyssa and, and Daniel not repping well for Life is Strange. She's really good. Alright. I was hoping that she'd maybe, like, you know, punch people on the head like she does to herself. That's sort of her, uh, her ultimate, but maybe later. She still has plenty of room to kill. Okay. Yeah, no, I was I was saying I don't know the name of Allison Stoner's character. I know Allison Stoner goes by they them, but we have you know we're saying she's really good. We're referring to the character, not to like disrespect the actress, um, because you know the quote is that um, we have Neb and Ryan here. Oh no, okay, I, I get it now. I'm anti Neb. Another nine year old dies at the hands of uh, of a character here. We have Neb tracking down and killing Ryan. Neb did threaten a lot of violence against members of the chat during double exposure. I, I believe it was Birdie, Chara, and Oma Sorbet, and now Ryan, fourth on the list. I told you, motherfuckers, I was coming for you! Alright, I'm, I'm assuming Neb used one of his many throwable bowling balls to uh, bludgeon Ryan from a distance, possibly. Alright, yeah, we're down, we're down five now. Let's see, we have Elliot and Cubby. Elliot stalks Cubby. I don't like that, Elliot. I don't like that from Elliot at all. Um, really creepy stuff. Again, Cubby, a child. Really not a good round for the children of the of the Hunger Games. I guess all of the Hunger Games participants in the real games, real, you know, the books, um, are children. But, you know, this is especially dire stuff here. Okay. We have Kid Patty is pricked by thorns while picking berries. That's not a death, though, right? I mean, Kid Patty has, has survived a lot worse. I've broken my ass bone doing fusty tunas. I've fallen from like the top of fucking Pride Rock and just split my spine in two, trying to perform a, a Japan air, um, a I'm crazy plant head or whatever. So I think a, a pricked finger from berry picking is, you know, not the biggest deal. I think I'll live. Um, we have PJ defeats Spore Jabib in a fight, but spares his life. Yeah, that's curious to me because PJ is, you know, a, a rather artistic fellow. And I would think that PJ would not find the beauty in something like Spore Jabib. Um, you would think PJ would kill something as monstrous as this uh, at first opportunity, but I don't know. Maybe PJ's just saving his energy for a more uh, more worthwhile kill. Because Spore Jabib is, is not something of the art world. So we have Nathan. Nathan dies from hunger. Well, you know, folks, there's only really one button to push for that. Another shitty day. <clears throat> that is the epitome of shitty days. Uh, Life is Strange not doing well. Um, Life is Strange has been a big part of the channel, you know, over the past couple of months. And uh, just like Double Exposure, not a great showing. Not good stuff here. Um, we have Neb and, and Warren are left, um, which are two of the more detestable characters. I mean, I'd, put, I'd say that they're more detestable than, than Nathan. Which, for the record, I was pro-Neb going into this. But after Neb did 
killed Ryan. You know, I'm, I'm anti-Nev, so. We have Mr. Plow re receives fresh food from an unknown sponsor. Well, surely it wasn't any of you, right? Surely all of you are were aghast at what Mr. Plow had done in, in the chat. It wasn't me, I'll tell you that much. It was not me. All right. We should have had 50 cent from the bar in here, by the way. It should have been Mr. Plow and 50 cent from the bar that I went to with my girlfriend and her friends. Um, that should have been District 12. We could have just thrown Elliot somewhere else. Um, whatever. Maybe maybe for next time. It was Mrs. Plow, yeah. <laughs> it was March Caprice. All right, Mango searches for firewood. Okay. Mango is often involved in sick burns, so it makes sense that he is uh, you know, a bit on the on the pyro side of things. We have Vodka, LMM, and The Shitter. Again, this is like a nightmare blunt rotation. Um, vodka overhears Lin-Manuel Miranda and The Shitter talking in the distance. Okay. I have no idea what these two would possibly have to converse about. Um, I know some people think Hamilton is kind of shitty, but I, I don't think it's that bad. Um, so, go to the bathroom, Shitter. All right. We have six cannon shots heard in the distance. Kiwi, rest in peace. Gurgi, Alyssa, Daniel, Ryan, and Nathan. Yeah, definitely bummed to lose Kiwi early. Um, Daniel is a huge win. Really upset about Ryan and Nathan. You know, I'm sad about that, Alyssa. But getting Gurgi out as well. So, you know, it's a mixed bag here. Um, but it's only going to get more and more painful as we go here. So, I can't believe Ryan's dead too. He could have distracted people with the sick DJ skills, you know. That's so, so sad. Okay, proceed. Kid Patty questions his sanity. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um... Most nine-year-olds uh, don't look like that, and that's that's for good reason, because he is not nine, he is 28. Um, he is, you know, trying to blend in amongst the skate crew and the, you know, cavalcade of Disney characters. Um, so that, that could only lead one to question his or her sanity. Uh, so that's really sad. Um, Tali receives medical supplies from an unknown sponsor, which I would say would probably be Vodka, but she's in the games. Although Vodka would be the type to be like, you know, women supporting women, even though she is my competition in the Hunger Games, because I know Pat hates her so deeply, I will send her medical supplies. Um, because I don't think there's any rules against participants, you know, sending each other supplies. Maybe there is, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't read the books. All right, Gantu. Let's see if Gantu can catch another um, scampery little grotesque creature of Jabib Gets Away. Uh, okay, actually, they're they're on the same team. You would think Gantu would kind of have, uh, you know, the the opposite of the inclination of, of aligning with something as, you know, stitch-coded as Spore Jabib. I feel like he is, like, a couple minutes, degrees away from grabbing a blue punch buggy and, and you know, wrecking all of, uh, you know, Hawaii streets. We have Neb and Presto, two mascots. Neb destroys Presto's supplies while he's asleep. That's just fucking perfect. I hate this fucking bowling ball. I'm never doing the voice again. This blows. Okay. The shitter. The shitter dies from hypothermia. You know, that's not how I really figured the shitter would have died. I feel like dysentery would have made a lot more sense for the shitter to die from. Um, but there you go. That's really sad. I guess go to the morgue, shitter. Go to the graveyard, shitter. What can you do? Um, we, we knew you so... We knew you too well, actually, the shitter. Okay. Mr. Plow quietly hums. I, you know, I, I tend to wish that Mr. Plow could have kept a lot more to himself and a lot more, you know, quiet. But um, at least now he's maybe learned a lesson or two. Go to the grave, shifter. <laughs> All right, we have Warren. Tries to treat his infection. I did sort of nerf Warren by throwing him into the simulation with an injury already. This is Warren after he went ape on Nathan, which I guess there is some shared history here. You know, Warren did once again defeat Nathan, if only by uh, placement here. So, Warren, I guess trying to treat, I'm assuming an eye infection, but that's an injury he had prior and just, you know, he got dirt in it. So, what can he do? Sorry, not, not all Hunger Games participants are casted equally. Sorry. Mango thinks about winning. Yeah, that, that seems in line with what I know of Mango. Just kind of, like, prognosticating his own success to himself. Um, he's like, man, I'm, I'm gonna get all these fucking fools with these nuts jokes. Alright, we have Elliot and Lin-Manuel Miranda. Again, just, like, such a nightmare combination. Um, Elliot and Lin-Manuel run into each other and decide to truce for the night. Okay. Again, you know, they're not gonna throw away their shots, folks. They're, uh, they, they know the British are coming. And if that's in the form of Warren and Mango and Mr. Plow, then so be it. They're going to hunker down like it's the uh, the Battle of Yorktown, so to speak. All right, Coggers looking just mortified. 
um, cooks his food before putting his fire out. Yeah, if only Coggers was joined by Lego Lumiere, he'd have a bit of a, a built-in fire situation, but uh, thankfully he's uh, learned to start fire on his own. That's kind of Hunger Games 101. Coggers is smart, what can I say? All right, big group here, what's going on? PJ, Cubby, Tails, Allison Stoner, and Vodka sleep in shifts, okay? Interesting alliance. Really surprised that PJ would decide to work with Vodka, but I mean, it worked really well for him the first time, so that makes sense. Um, trying to figure out who's on the bottom of this alliance. You'd have to think probably Cubby. I feel like these other ones are just going to cannibalize him the, the absolute first chance they get. I don't mean that as a figure of speech. I mean they're going to eat him for his meat, um, to which Tails will probably react thusly <laughs> like that. All right, moving on. Day two, Mr. Plow and Mango. Yeah, I, I gotta say, that's not the most surprising alliance. Uh, both, you know, I would say fervent harassers of me. Obviously, Mango's is a bit lighter in tone, but... Yeah, Kiwi, you were the first to get chomped. Um, how did Kiwi die? Did someone kill Kiwi? Or did Kiwi just die of, like, some disease? I don't remember how he met his end. Really sad, though. I wanted to see Kiwi at least in the final five. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really worried about what's happening next here. Warren over here is Presto and Sporjabib. Okay, so we have the District 1 characters still working together. Um, you know, there's really no law saying that the District uh, Alliance or the District characters that start together have to, like, stay together. Um, he was, oh yeah, he was fighting with Nathan Prescott. Uh, or Warren. It was one of the two. I feel like if it was Warren, it would have made a huger deal about it. Um, but yeah. So, Presto and Jabib still working together, still keeping the, uh, the mascot energy strong here. Uh, Tails scares Kid Patty off, again, probably by making <coughs> this horrendous noise. I, I know I would run away if I heard that, you know, late in the night. I guess we're in the daytime, but even in, in broad daylight, I'd be terrified to hear that. It's coming out of the woods, you know. Alright, I'll, I'll live to fight another day, hopefully. Alright, these two are in the same district. Coggers and Neb, kind of the, you know, the, the good and bad here. Two sides of the same coin. We have, okay, Cogger scaring Neb off, so, you know, in contrast of District 1, we have Coggers and Neb not on the same team. Again, maybe we'll see Coggers, you know, build up, because Coggers hasn't gotten a kill yet, but he's been well fed, he's been scaring people away, um, so he's playing, he's playing his cards close to his chest here. No more scaring, only kill. We'll see, PJ. We have Elliot and Cubby. Elliot sprains his ankle while running away from Cubby. Yeah, that's sort of the natural approach to being anywhere around Cubby is to run away from him. Wait, let me tell you about my new my new crypto Cubby coin. And Elliot's just getting the fuck out of there. We have Gantu uh, discovers a cave. Okay, Gantu's got a new home base. That's good. Good for him. We have Allison Stoner and Lin Manuel. Again, this is the theater kid district. Um, okay, Allison Stoner sprains her ankle while running away from Lin Manuel Miranda. Yeah, that that also makes sense. Pretty natural response. And Gabaka camouflages herself in the bushes. They can't see me! I'm a bush! And we have PJ and Tolly the horse girl. PJ steals from Tolly when she's not looking. Perfect, good move from PJ. Just like how she stole my fucking joy at my 10th birthday party at Roller King. Fuck. It's, uh, seriously, I'm sitting there with my friends. We're just trading furniture, maybe for 15, 20 minutes, at most half an hour, okay? And she has to come over and, like, ruin my birthday. Okay, sorry, just some old 10-year-old trauma. We only lost the shitter. We just lost the shitter on uh, day two, so pretty manageable loss, all things considered. Your mom's a DS party, exactly. That is what I said. All right, and everyone loved it, because that was the joke of the hour. Okay, here's our fallen. Kiwi Ryan. Oh, all of District 7 is out, so if you voted 7, sorry to... Oh, and District 9 as well. They're both gone, so... Um, and Presto's got two kills, and so does, so does Tails. Neb, Nathan, Nathan's dead, but Neb and Allison Stoner have one. Okay. Alright, we're getting there. Let's proceed. I pass out from, or rather, Presto passes out from exhaustion. See, he's like an extension of me, so when I see Presto, I'm like, oh, that's me. He represents me so often in media. Um, but yeah, Presto's tired, he's a little tie tie. Mr. Plow, like, who keeps fucking giving shit to Mr. Plow? I really don't appreciate Mr. Plow getting these fat paychecks. Thank you, Presto, for, for keeping me sane. Um, hope you feel better soon. We have Gantu, staying awake all night in that cave, little cave party for Gantu. We have uh, Tails, Cubby, and Vodka discuss the games and what may ha What do you think is going to happen? Oh, I don't know. Tails, what do you think about this? That's what I thought. That's what he thinks about most things. All right, we have Kid Patty. 
loses sight of where he is. Is this like... <laughs> this is starting to feel a little personal. A little pointed. Kid Patty starts to lose his sanity. Loses sight of where he is in the world. Like, I just feel like the simulation is maybe trying to say something to me. Yeah. <laughs> Where's your head at? We should have said that when he lost his fucking sanity. That was a perfectly simple joke there. All right, here we go. Group of four. We have, oh boy. Jabib, Mango, Tali, and Warren tell each other ghost stories to lighten the mood. Yeah, I mean, Jabib's story would probably just be, like, of his existence. Um, Tali probably, you know, talking about how she totally owned Kid Patty at his birthday party. Warren... Again, probably just about his general existence, you know. Um, he's seen a lot of horror movies, so I could see that coming up in, you know, Fireside Chat. Mango probably being like, hey guys, uh, you ever hear of SawCon? It's like this horror convention. Yeah, SawCon. And everyone's just totally buying into it. Really engaging earnestly in the dialogue with Mango. And he's like, I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him right now. SawCon D's nuts. Wow. And you know, Mango's gonna be the first to go. In this, uh, in this grouping. We have, okay, the Theater Kid group. LMM lets Allison into his shelter. Okay. The, the Alliance is, is still... Uh, I guess Allison ran away from LMM earlier, but maybe this is a, a truce. Maybe an opportunity to uh, make amends here. We have... Oh boy, okay. PJ, Coggers, and Neb. It's gone too far. It's gone way, way too far. I take it all back. Every every nice thing I said about Neb. I take it all completely back. But you know what they call this? They call this a strike. This is a strike for Neb. If if not, then at least a split. Maybe a one-two, you know? <sighs> I told you you shouldn't have crossed me, motherfuckers! Strike! That's more of a baseball sort of cadence, but Neb doesn't know any better. He was born in a bowling alley in the 90s. All he knows is is cheap nacho cheese, dirty, vibrant flooring, and murder. That's his big three. Neb triumphantly killed PJ and Neb. Uh, sorry, Neb triumphantly killed PJ and Coggers. I wish Neb would kill himself. Um, so that's that's district on district violence there, because Neb did kill Coggers. So I think that's district 10. Wow, this is really bad. Oh, sorry, I did forget that PJ was also born in the bowling alley in the 90s. Maybe, maybe Ned was the, uh, the Highlander principal. There can only be one. Okay. That is really rough. Well, Vodka will hopefully carry on the torch for PJ. Or hopefully not, because Vodka's trying to watch the Dancing with the Stars finale. Alright, we have Elliot. Tries to sing himself to sleep. Maybe you'll have a dream about being a better boyfriend, Elliot. I don't know. Just a fucking novel idea. I'm not mad about it. Alright, Gantu makes a slingshot. I guess, yeah, they probably confiscated his, uh, you know, his blasters, his alien guns, uh, at the door, so he's gotta make do. Uh, Elliot discovers a river. Not gonna say I hope he drowns, but I'm not gonna, like, mourn him either. Um, we have Warren constructs a shack. I don't think Warren could construct anything. He can't even construct one single text message to the girl he likes. He has to do it in a series of six or seven in a row. So, not super impressed by that, Warren, but whatever. We have Vodka and Mr. Plow. Vodka, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why is everybody so pro Mr. Plow? This guy came in and just fucking sexually harassed me. Is this... Hopefully it's like some kind of ploy. To like get into his good graces and slit his throat while he's sleeping or something. Dream Master, thank you so much for the two months. This might be nothing, but when playing KH1 again for the eighth time, I noticed that when I beat the swing mini game, um, oh yeah, you can you can light the fire because he gets cold from being on the swing, you know, because he's he's so high up there from all the swooshing, so he's cold, he's chilly. You light the fire. I think he says he's cold from the swing. Actually, I think I'm not even making that up. But yeah, I did know about that. I'm not sure if I remember to cover it in the treasure guide though, but. Vodka's helping Mr. Plow because, of course, because, yeah, they're natural allies. They both bother me. All right, makes sense. I know Vodka, you know, disavows that kind of specific harassment against me. But, you know, you, you got to pick your battles here in the Hunger Games. So you got to take what you can get. Spore Jabib goes hunting. And I believe we built him with the carnivore mouth. So it's not like he's hunting for, for leaves and berries, you know. He's hunting for human meat. So watch out. We have Tails and Lin-Manuel. Working together for the day. Um, yeah, I guess. I mean, they both have a tendency to be, you know, a little bit annoying. Probably overhated in some circles. But I could see that. Uh, we have Mango. 
Fishes, okay, mango fishing for me to bite on any of the fucking D's nuts setups, probably. That's just what he does. Uh, Cubby, Cubby and Presto. Presto, I don't really like, I don't like the crowd that you're running with, son. Splitting up to search for resources. We have Tolly the Horse Girl, receives clean water from an unknown sponsor. I don't know, it's like the people that I'm like most against, like people that I've actually had negative interactions with in real life are like getting the most sponsors and like just general assistance from fellow participants. Um, so don't know what that's all about. And for the record, <laughs> Tolly, the real human, was nothing but pleasant to me, like, in the back half of high school. Um, but, you know, this is, like, the cryogenically frozen version, you know, f fictional version of the girl who was accosting me in the, uh, the roller, roller skating rink back in the day. Back in the year 2006. Um... Um, Pat, just so you know, if any of your enemies get a package that kills them, I sent that. Thank you, Jungle Wine. Um, we have Kid Patty uh, searching for a water source. Okay, good stuff. Um, although, I believe anytime Kid Patty fell into a water source in Dessa, he gets um, scolded with, you're not a fish. So, hopefully it goes better for him this time around. Um, Allison Stoner, okay, also fishing. She's really good, so she'll probably catch something. And we have Neb discovering a cave. I hope he fucking rots and dies in that cave. Don't care what happens to him. All right, we lost PJ and we lost Coggers. Really two titans of industry here, of the murder Hunger Games industry. Um, and actually, I don't know if they killed anybody. I think they were pacifists the entire way through, but still, big names going into this. Um, and PJ's gonna say, is that a fat joke? Because you said big names, it's not. I'm just gonna cut them off at the pass there. Okay, let's proceed. Tali, Presto, and Mango discuss the games and what might happen in the morning. Again, Presto, not a huge fan of who you're hanging out with. I mean, Mango's fine, but he's not really to be trusted. <laughs> Fucking Ryu Pig. Um, so, no, Neb is really just, like, this benign mascot character in Double Exposure, but I gave him, <laughs> but I gave him, like, a silly voice, and I made him kind of unhinged. And then he killed, like, a lot of fan favorites in the Hunger Games, so not, uh, not the most beloved character right now. Um, Spore Jabib fends Neb, Gantu, and Vodka away from his fire. Okay, I mean, Jabib did make it to the tribal stage of, uh, of Spore, so he does know how to make a fire. Um, very recently a part of his toolkit. He never made it to the civilization or, um, galactic stage, but he, he does know how to make a mean fire, so there's that. Oh boy, Warren, Warren and Mr. Plow. <laughs> oh no, Mr. Plow, you have just got the nastiest, most unclean track record. Um, okay, well, that's gonna happen, you know? It's purely for warmth, I'm sure. You're gonna have that in the Hunger Games, unfortunately. Allison Stoner thinks about home. Um, surprised she's not thinking about Camp Rock, because, you know, she got a lot of big fans there. Um, I, does anyone know, like, <laughs> I should watch Camp Rock with the patrons at some point, like, does Allison Stoner's character do anything else besides play the piano in that one scene, like, is she, like, a part of the narrative, or, like, does anyone else say that she's really good at anything else? Um, yeah, Warren Gayram. Okay, too, yeah, I was also, I feel like I was too old for it, but I want to say it came out, like, 2007, 2008. Alright, also, this straw is way too small for this cup. She calls out Demi for being a faker, okay? Alright, listen, that seems, <laughs> that seems on brand. Okay, we have LMM, loses sight of where he is. Eliza, I'm lost, and I'm an orphan. Where's Philip? All right, we have Ellie and Kid Patty. I don't like where this is going. Please don't huddle for warmth. Siri, play the hymn of the faith. No, not you, actually. Not you, actually. I was kidding. <sighs> Fuck. He's absolutely the worst fucking boyfriend I've ever had. The only boyfriend I've ever had. In a dream. But, you know, the point stands. Fuck me. Well, no, actually, Elliot. He would never... Even after being drawn a bath and made mac and cheese. It was an entirely sexless, loveless relationship. And now, it's a bloodful one as well. Fuck. God damn it. Who do we even root for anymore? Vodka? <laughs> Alright. We have Tails and Cubby. They are from the same district. Let's see what's happening. Tails stabs Cubby with a tree branch. Oh, you stabbed me! Pan! We should have had Bobby, right? We should. We totally should have had Bobby, by the way. In the, uh, I guess, you know, this this cast was made a little too late. Like, Gurgi snuck in, you know? Cubby snuck in. But, is that a death, by the way? It didn't say killed, but... 
Like, I feel like most people could survive being stabbed with a tree branch, depending on, you know, where it is, but... Um, if it's in, like, a vital organ... Um... And there's no rules about being immortal, right? Even if you're from Neverland, like, you're forever young, but... That just means you're not gonna die from old age. You can still die from, like, a mortal wound, so... Tails does his war cry. Ah! It's, like, the only joke I have for Tails, sorry. Ah! There you go. Um... <laughs> oh, crunch! We're back from the crunch. Um, yeah, I guess Tinkerbell also nearly dies, so... There's definitely immortality in Neverland. Alright. Goodbye, Cubby. Maybe? I'm not sure. Um, Allison Stoner collects fruit from a tree. She's really good, as usual. Uh, Tolly... Sorry, Tails, Gantu, Tolly, Sporge Abib, Raid Warren's camp while he's hunting. Hopefully hunting for better communication skills, because God knows he needs it. We have Elliot, sees smoke rising in the distance, but decides not to investigate. Um, could be that I burnt the mac and cheese I was making for him, kindly, as a good boyfriend, but whatever. Again, not salty about it. Uh, Mr. Plow tries to spear fish with a trident. Yeah, um, there's some joke here about, like, using using his spear, maybe for, you know, good this time instead of evil. Oh boy, this could be a massacre, could be ghost stories, we don't know. Um, okay, Presto, Vodka, Neb, and Lin-Manuel raid Mango's camp while he's hunting. Mango, I'm really sorry about that. This is a pretty unsavory collection of characters. Presto, you know, kind of, again, caught up with the wrong crowd here. Because between LMM, Neb, and God Vodka, like, that's a tough crowd to be running with. Um, okay. Not good. I don't like to see, like, you know, chatter on chatter, violence. Um, so I need you guys to be better. Make, you know, set a better example for the community. Okay, so Cubby did die. Uh, me and Cubby both died. Um, I made a pretty decent run. I'm just projecting myself onto both Kid Patty and Presto. Um, they're sort of my avatars. I'm living uh, vicariously through them. All right, um, so who's who's left here? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, there's our organization 13 of Hunger Games 3 participants. Um, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 totally intact districts. Um, who has the highest KD? Tails, wow, yeah. Three kills for Tails. Presto's not really been moving a lot. Really not that many... Oh, Neb, actually. Neb as well is tied. Um... But a lot of people have just been succumbing to injury or silly stuff like that, so... Um, if you voted for 1, 5, 6, or 12, you are still in the running here. Oh wait, aren't there only 10 options, Monica? What did you do for the last three districts? Did you just like cram them all together as well? Um, who's gonna win America's Favorite House Guest? Um, oh yeah, sorry, if you're, yeah, you, you get points regardless of if your whole district is intact, so... Um, yeah, 11 and, and 8 as well are viable. Um, America's Favorite Player is probably gonna be... I mean, Tails is, is a likable killer, so he's performing well, and I feel like people tend to like Tails. Um, Sporge Abib has had a quiet game, but I could see Sporge Abib resonating with the masses, especially the cat ladies of America, so... I combine districts, okay. Alright, let's uh, proceed. Are we on date 3 now? Night 4, okay. Uh, Tails, Presto, and Warren cheerfully sing songs together, okay. Mango tending to his wounds. Um, usually I'm the one wounded by what Mango's saying, but Mango, uh, you know, feeling the heat on his end this time. Uh, Vodka defeats Lin-Manuel in a fight, but spares his life? I don't really understand Vodka's game plan. Very reminiscent of Survivor, where she, she has her opponents right where she needs them, and then she lifts her foot off the gas at the last second and uh, takes PJ to the final three, but that's, again, none of my business. We all play games for different reasons. Um, we have Neb here, climbing a tree to rest. Again, I, I can only hope, I can only pray that fucking God himself strikes him down. Just strike that tree, let Neb fall onto Warren, I guess would be great, that'd be ideal. Um, Allison Stoner and uh, Jabib sleep in ships, okay. We have the spooky um, Jose Temple music playing. I don't even know if you could hear it. I don't know when you got wounded, Mango. I think you were fishing. Maybe you got hit, hit by a fish. <laughs> All right, we have Elliot. Elliot and Tolly hold hands. Is that why Elliot didn't want anything to do with me? Because he's always he's always been a Tolly guy? This fucking blows. All right, we have Gantu cries himself to sleep. <laughs> I'm just big boned. All the other participants were making fun of his weight. So he's crying himself to sleep. Mr. Plow receives medical supplies from an unknown fucking sponsor. 
yeah, this music really fits my confusion. I don't know why everyone out there in fucking, what is it, Pan? Pawn? What's it, Pan M? Yeah, Pan M. Why is everyone such a big fan of Mr. Plow? It's fucking ridiculous. Proceed. Tail searches for a water source. Um, you Sonic fans could tell me. Uh, what, ocean Speedway? Ocean Seaside? Uh, ocean something? There's there's water there. Sonic Heroes, Sonic 1 level, Sonic Adventure 1 rather. Tali and Ellie, I guess they're like boyfriend girlfriend now. They're hunting for other tributes. So, LMM collects fruit from a tree. How does a bastard orphan? Um, Presto travels to higher ground. Okay, you mean he can't float at will? Um, Emerald Coast, there you go. That's what I was thinking. Um, we have Gantu, Chase's house, and Stoner. <laughs> okay, run away, Allison. Uh, vodka chases Mr. Plow. So, vodka, again, really mixed messages. Consider the coconut. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go, the Moana soundtrack. Um, vodka tended to Mr. Plow's wounds earlier, and now chasing Mr. Plow? Hopefully to kill him? Um, that's, that's all I can really hope for at this point, that Vodka, again, was, you know, doing the long con. Yeah, very chaotic. It's just like Survivor, really. It really is Vodka's third Survivor season. Alright, we have Mango discovers a cave. Could be the Gantu cave? The Neb cave? There's two caves that have been established. I don't know if it's the same one, or we got a third one on our hands. Uh, Mango setting up the, the Man cave, the Mango cave. We have Warren. Wow, this is a really nightmarish search party. Warren, Jabib, and Neb hunting for other tribute. So this is a team... And Tali and Elliot. A lot of the villains have made it really far. Um, Neb, Warren, Mango, Mr. Plow, Vodka, Gantu, uh, Lin Manuel, Tali and Elliot. Like, really, on the hero side, he got Tails, Presto, Allison Stoner, Jabib, I guess, but he's really, really creepy. Yeah, Warren's going ape. Okay. Yes, you are, Vodka, come on. Uh, no can shots. This was a bloodless day. All right, proceed. Night five. Warren cooks his food before putting his fire out. Um, oh my god, Vodka. It was all building up to this. She was chasing Mr. Plow into a trap. Let, her, let him right into her clutches where she had the C4 planted at the camp of Tails, Allison Stoner, and Lynn manuel The theater kid group, gone. Mr. Plow, gone. Tails, gone. And with that, does Vodka eclipse everyone else's kill streak? Because Tails had three, he's dead, Neb had three, what happens to him moving forward? You don't like the fact that I won! She says it, everyone here is in the distance, she she grabs the, uh, the war horn, she screams into it, a, a girl boss cry of victory. Wow, happy Women's History Month, everybody. Okay, that's just four taken right out to make up for the bloodless, uh, day five, I think it was, or, uh, night four. Um, Neb receives clean water from an unknown sponsor. Probably fucking Safi or Vin. One of those fucking losers. Diamond. <clears throat> whatever. Um, Reggie. <laughs> we have Sporge Beeb. Thinks about home. <laughs> what is home to Sporge Beeb? You know, the, the nest in the creature stage. When, are we talking about, like, the ancestral home? Like, when he was, like, a, a eukaryotic being? Um, I guess... Vaga, you know. Are, are we eukaryotic beings? Like humans? Um, back when he was like a little cell guy is what I mean. Because that's where he was birthed from, you know? Was the the primordial soup. Um, yeah, yeah. The ooze. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, Vodka, really strong showing for women's wrongs here. Yeah, we're eukaryotic. There we go. Okay. I think Neb is definitely prokaryotic. I, I don't trust him. He is other to me. We have Elliot climbs a tree to rest. You know, he is of the forest. He is familiar with the... I don't mean, I don't think deers, deer <laughs> climb trees, but I'm sure it happens in the movie at some point. Okay, we have Mango. Um, Mango loses sight of where he is. Mango, I don't know if, again, this is literal or more of an existential crisis, but I wish you all the best with this uh, this ongoing inner, inner trauma, inner struggle. Tolly the horse girl thinks about home. Her fucking multi-story mansion that she lived in. Like, this is facts, actually. Like, she was rich as fuck. Which you kind of have to be to be a horse girl, right? So, I'd miss home, too, if I were her. Um, and then we have Gantu and Presto run into each other and decide the truce for the night. Okay. Very strong ally for Presto. You know, Presto's a, a small little guy. He could use... Uh, I don't even know if Presto's got any kills yet, so... Having a meat shield in Gantu is definitely a strong strategy in both Survivor and the Hunger Games. Okay, we have... Oh my god, Vodka. 
Vodka and Sporge Beeb, which really, in a way, Sporge Beeb is Vodka's child, because Vodka really wanted Spore. Uh, Vodka and Jabib fight Warren and Tali, and Vodka and Spore Jabib survive. So two villains taken out just like that. Women's wrongs once again. Women on women violence. Uh, fantastic. Thank you for gifting a sub to Sakoria. Appreciate that. Um, oh, by the way, the Corticopia was replenished, so this is why there's another bloodbath. So Vodka's at this count of seven kills? What, no. Four, five, six. Yeah, if we're, if we're not splitting between Jabib and Vodka. Oh, fuck! Gantu severely slays his mango with a sword. Is that death? Is that death? Please don't let it be death. I know I said mango was a villain, but I'm kind of, he's an anti-hero, you know? I'm, I'm rooting for him. That was not a Taylor Swift reference. Okay. Please let Neb die of fucking hypothermia or dysentery or, or something. Explosive eternal diarrhea, something. Neb decides not to go to the feast. Great. He's already feasted on all of our hopes and dreams and our faves. Okay. Fine. Presto kills Elliot as he tries to run my boy's first kill, avenging his father. Thank God. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay. Look at that. He's already lost a horn, and now he's lost his life. I could not be a prouder father. If Presto wins, a little boring, but kind of goaded, right? Okay, proceeding. Presto searches for firewood. Yeah, Presto's like, he, he's feeling himself. He's like, all right, I got a kill under my belt. I'm going to make a camp here. It's going to be all smooth sailing for the boy. Uh, Neb traveling to higher ground, probably to drop a fucking bowling ball on people like uh, Villager Side B or Villager... Villager Side Smash? Is that what it is? Um, so yeah, good job, Presto. Presto deserves pets for that. We have Jabib and Vodka, which just, uh, you know, had a really strong alliance in killing uh, Warren and, and Tully the Horse Girl. Um, oh my god. Matricide. I can't believe it. I can't, it was, it was the, the long con of the long conner. Spore Jabib kills the, the woman who brought him into this world, who begged for Spore, and, and Jabib whispers into Vodka, You said you wanted to catch the Dancing with the Stars finale, didn't you? Shh. Closes her eyes. Well, once again, Vodka falling, falling just short at the finish line. Really sad stuff. But again, at least he can catch the Dancing with the Stars finale. A greater woman wouldn't beg. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Okay. Well, that's it for Vodka. We have we have the Blitzball song playing, by the way. Good stuff here. Gantu receives a hatchet from an unknown sponsor. Okay. Um, who out there? I mean, Esper probably. I could see that. You know, Esper uh, not on the cast. Feels like a, a reasonable pick for to be out there in Pan Am watching the games. Being like, hey, you know what? Gantu, he's fine as hell. He deserves a hatchet. That's true. PJ could have killed Sports Beep. It's like poetry, you know? It's it's like history, too. It rhymes. PJ was Vodka's undoing. Wow. All right. Well, Gantu gets a hatchet from Esper, our own Esper Roba. Let's see. We have nine cannon shots, our bloodiest day. We have Mr. Plow, Tails, Allison Stoner. Saying these, <laughs> saying these names in, like, quick sequence of each other really drives home how fucking truly stupid this is. Uh, Lynn manuel Miranda, Rip to the Theater Kid group. We have Warren Gay Ram, and we have Tolly the Horse Girl, and Mango, and Elliot. Yeah, so Mango was killed. That was death for Mango. Um, and Vodka. God. Vodka always has a great storyline. Like, say what you will, right? But every time she shows up for one of these, you know, fake games or real games, there's always, like, some compelling vodka storyline. You know, Fr Fr Frutoon's got to have, like, the moral dilemma of cutting her before merge. You got the whole PJ and vodka drama. And then you got, like, this sick run that she goes on in Hunger Games 3. So, vodka, say what you will about her, but she always makes good TV. Um, so there's there's always that under her belt there. Okay. Always one of the best characters. Probably a uh, frontrunner for America's favorite, or Pan Am's favorite. Which is not actually something they do in the in this sim, unfortunately. All right, so let's just see everyone's status, because I think we're getting down to the wire here. District 1, still alive, six combined kills. We have Gantu in District 5, and Neb in District 10. So really, it is like, you know, the heroes, the true big mascot heroes, Presto and Jabib. You have Gantu as kind of a middleman. He's the wild card. The Gantu fucker contingent out there is definitely rooting for him. Again, sending him hatchets, sending him a lot of good vibes. And then you have the true villain. <laughs> of <laughs> the entire Hunger Games and potentially the last like two-ish months of stream in Neb. So there is definitely a heel here 
There are very rootable heroes, and sort of like uh, the plucky underdog. Only got one kill, but maybe he takes th these other three out in a big explosive at the end, so... Yeah, it does seem a little rigged that the channel mascots, in, you know, both in District 1, you could say they're the careers that they've made it to the uh, the Final 5 here. Um, or Final 4, rather. Um, but, yeah. Man, the Fruity District didn't get any kills. The Skate District got nothing. The Shit District got nothing. A lot of, like, really, this district, really bad performances. Okay. And G yeah, Gantu's one kill was Mango. So, you know, Gantu, Man Mango's an anti-hero, maybe you call Gantu an anti-villain, right? There's, there's equilibrium there. Okay, here we go, let's see what happens. This could be the end of the game right here, once we move on to our next page. We have Orange Theme playing, might be heading towards the triumphant end, or a really dark one. Proceed. Neb cooks his food before putting his fire out, Sporjabeeb sets up camp, this is, this feels like the calm before the storm. Gantu questions his sanity. Am I just big boned? And we have Presto cannot handle the circumstances and commit suicide. <laughs> oh no. Presto, you made it this fucking far, man. Oh my god. This is so sad. He couldn't handle it at the last hour. All the blood, all the blood said it was too much. Oh my god. He wasn't made for this. He was made to represent the brand. Not to get blood on his hands or his little um, I guess he doesn't have hands. You know, his little, like, spiky coat thing. That's not what he was made for. He jumped off the mic, yeah. Oh, presto. Okay, I guess the the monstrosity of Spore, Jabib, and Gantu is the only thing standing between us and Nebwin. We've been pleased with the first two Hunger Games results. Okay, as a reminder, either Donald or Tara won the first one, don't remember. David Russell, universally beloved, won the second Hunger Games. We might be due for, you know, the Richard Hatch of Hunger Games. It might be time for the villain. I'd hate to see it, but we might be we might be on his doorstep. Let's see. Let's just let this sad um, resting music play. This is Eunice theme, it says. That's weird. Let's let's get this some more because uh, this is gonna be the final gauntlet here. Let's let's get assault. That's that's a good ending song. Assault. That's one of regular GF's favorites from the FF10 soundtrack. This is when uh, I believe you're getting ready to fight Evre, among other places. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it said Unis theme, but it was also like the napping music at the very beginning. Um, Kiwi. I think you won by seeing the least violence. You know. You weren't, uh, you weren't privy to all this, this death, this destruction. All right, here we go. God knows where we're headed. Spore Jabib receives clean water from an unknown sponsor. A lot of fans out here in the chat probably sending him help his way. Neb steals from Gantu. This is not good. If Neb got the slingshot or any of other Ga of Gantu, the hatchet even, this could be bad. If Neb shows up with the slingshot or the hatchet moving forward, it sets him up for an easy kill against his competition. God, no, please not, Neb. All right, one cannon shot. We're moving on. What is this, day eight? What is this? Night seven. Neb and Gantu sleep in shifts. No, Gantu. Gantu was the fucking wild card, and he's working with Neb. Sporjabib getting more food. We're trying to fuel him up, get our boy into peak, peak position, peak physique to destroy his competition. Again, he is both... Uh, actually, is he an omnivore? We might have turned him into an omnivore at the end of the creature stage, so he can eat whatever he wants. So he, he's built, he's bulking up on vitamins. He, he needs to be strong as he can for this, this upcoming battle. Neb collects fruit from a tree. Okay, Sporge Meat making his own slingshot. Gantu tries to sleep through the entire day, just kind of hoping that the other two will kill each other, I guess. Okay, yeah, hit the Jabib in his honor, please. Come on. No cannon shots. Okay, proceed. Neb. No. Neb shoots a poisonous blow dart into Gantu's neck, slowly killing him. Jabib accidentally detonates a landmine while trying to arm it. Jabib, you float, my dude! You float! In the air! How did you fucking detonate a landmine? <laughs> oh, no. This is the worst outcome of November 2024. The bad timeline. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. We were due for a villain. Nev from District 10. It is just not our month. <laughs> it's the anti Billy Saint time. Okay, well, I, I can think of no more fitting track from 
the FF10 soundtrack to play. You got the bad ending. We'll be back tomorrow for Pajama Sam 3, part of our Thanksgiving programming, 6 p.m. We'll have some trivia as well, all about light in Kingdom Hearts. Um, we will not be here Thursday. That'll be Thanksgiving. We'll be back Saturday for Disney's Extreme Skate Adventure. You know where to find me. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Discord. I'm on Patreon. Folks, all I can say is be safe, be kind, be courteous out there. Watch out for sentient bowling balls and um hug your loved ones okay because you never know when they might somehow land on a landmine even though they float or uh get poisoned by a blow dart so just um keep your peace and i'll, I'll see you tomorrow and i'll end the predictions bye